Hello again, everyone. Edwin Lerner back once again. In this YouTube astrological segment, I'm going to be giving you my Cancer April 2019 horoscope forecast part two of two. And yes, this does apply and pertain to the sun, moon, and ascendant. Anyway, well, first thing up is as far as April goes, Venus will be in Aries from the 20th until the 30th. So the 10th house is what will be emphasized and highlighted. Now, at this time, uh, one may make money. Uh, through an Aries uh, career, it could be through doing work as an EMT or surgeon or doing something with welding, carpentry, arson investigation, doing something in a combative sport such as karate or boxing, uh, judo. This could also be about valuing courage, fortitude, aggression, and assertiveness in uh in matters pertaining to one's career, attaining ambitions, uh, business matters. Uh, it could be issues uh, with uh, perhaps a dominant parent, which is often the father authority figures. This could also be at this time, if you're unattached at this time, Cancer, you might connect with an Aries sun, moon, or ascendant, or one that embodies Aries characteristics. It could be somebody in a position of authority, a business uh, person. Uh, it could be somebody prominent in your career, uh, a person that may be in some kind of government or political uh, field or somebody that could really help you in terms of improving your stature in life. This could also be now, uh, in some cases, uh, looking at this, where you may love ardently, and it could be uh, an older person, a uh, person that might uh, be in business, or somebody that could uh, figure prominently in your uh, reputation and public image, uh, such as somebody that might be a promoter. This could be uh, also, too, uh, at this time. Well, anyway, the next thing up I want to get to is, well, Mars will be in Gemini, so the 12th house is what will be emphasized and highlighted. Now, at this time, uh, this could uh, manifest uh, perhaps in dealing, um, perhaps using some, I call it the art of trickeration or being shrewd, being very cunning, perhaps to uh, combat uh, Gemini. Uh, uh, they could be, uh, I'm sorry, it's using uh, trickeration and being very shrewd, being very cunning, perhaps to uh, combat hidden adversaries or are using a lot of energy, that kind of energy to weed out uh, people that might be pretending to be your friends, but they're truly hidden enemies. It could be something where uh, a combative Gemini might be driving you figuratively crazy. It could be a Gemini sun, moon, or ascendant person, or simply one that embodies Gemini characteristics. Since we're talking about the 12th house in Mars, this could be a time where you don't necessarily have an overabundance of energy. It might really, it's really could be about having less vitality and energy uh, than usual. It could be, uh, given it's Gemini energy, it could be from maybe uh, perhaps from arguing uh, with others. A lot of verbal combating might make you feel somewhat drained at this time. Uh, or it could be just have been doing work that, that is Gemini, like such as uh, something requires dexterity, such as uh, working on uh, being an auto mechanic or working on cars or refrigeration mechanic, anything that might require the use of the hands very strongly. Now, at this time, this could be about, in some cases, this could be about a variety or manifold of uh, clandestine uh, sexual liaisons, but could also be, uh, it, it could be also too where you might, if you're unattached, you might have a sexual liaison uh, with a, a Gemini sun, moon, or ascendant, or one that embodies Gemini-like characteristics. It could be one that you really like to keep very hidden and very private. And also putting a lot of, it's about a lot of mental energy in some cases in solitude and seclusion, doing things that are mentally uh, stimulating uh, at this time. Now, at this time as well, in some cases, this could be about scattering your energy uh, where we're doing many things superficially and scattering your energy might result in uh, self undoing at this time. Um, this could be too. Also, too, now in some isolated cases, this could manifest in becoming somewhat angry at a Gemini-like mental illness, such as something that like a bipolar situation or some kind of a 
personality, just like multiple personality disorder or whatever, whatever that is. I don't know if I'm saying that exactly, but you understand what I'm saying. Uh, or you could look that up and, but that is, uh, anyway, but that, but, uh, anyway, but that could be very isolated and a lot of that could be dependent predicated on aspects this makes the points in your chart if it makes an adverse aspect to your natal mercury it can increase some propensity for it or if you have uh, elements in your own natal chart such as a very strongly afflicted mercury or malefic say in your 12th house things of that nature but anyway next thing up Jupiter will be in Sagittarius still, so the sixth house is what will be emphasized and highlighted. Now, at this time, as I've talked about previously, that Jupiter uh, can be very, uh, it could it'd be very paradoxical, could be uh, very strongly benign and benevolent, but it could also have a tendency to enlarge and expand. And it could enlarge and expand Sagittarius uh, health issues, such as something with the thigh, uh, the liver, or even the sciatic nerve. Uh, especially, let's say if this is making it in conjunct uh, to your uh, to your ascendant in your chart, hits a point where it makes that uh, in conjunct aspect, or uh, in also if there's other elements, say it makes an adverse aspect to your natal uh, sun. Uh, for example, as well, and, if, it, and if, if it's doing something where it's actually doing both, it could really increase that propensity for those kind of issues. Now, it could also be, on a positive note, this could be very fortuitous for uh, incorporating jocularity and joviality in your daily routine. Often goodwill, good humor can often inspire good things uh to to happen and, and just in a lot of and, and really just emphasizing a lot of positivity in your daily routine this could be very fortuitous and auspicious as well for doing something sports related or athletic related uh which could be very uh positive for your health uh at this time but anyway uh another way um this could also manifest this could be about uh, perhaps being very auspicious for uh, dealings with a Sagittarius uh, fellow uh, employee. It could be a Sagittarius sun, moon, or ascendant person, or one that embodies uh, Sagittarius um, characteristics. And also about having a lot of, uh, perhaps a lot of hope and, uh, and optimism as well for perhaps... Um, perhaps being um, providing some religious service and also maybe just incorporating religion in uh, your daily routine at this time and you might actually approach matters with health and hygiene with a lot more exuberance and enthusiasm more so uh, than usual uh, at this time so anyway next thing up Saturn will still be in Capricorn, so the seventh house is what will be emphasized and highlighted. Now, at this time, you may be dealing with some uh, restrictions and limitations and matters connected uh, with partnerships or relationships in general, others, the gra a grandmother perhaps. It might be a time, too, where you might be uh, taking care of... Um, so, uh, per, uh, a significant other, a grandmother, uh, somebody you might be close in some kind of business partnership with. It could be um, doing, say, it could be somebody that's very debilitated, very sickly, and might be making you feel somewhat despondent, and melancholy. It could be something Capricorn related, such as something with the knees, the bones, or the joints. And also, too, this is about where you might be gaining. Um, uh, more structure and discipline uh, in matters uh, in your relationships at this time. And if you're unattached at this time, Cancer, this could be a time where you might connect uh, with an older person. It could be an older Capricorn uh, in some cases. Uh, it could be a Capricorn sun, moon, or ascendant person, or one that embodies Capricorn characteristics. Now, in some cases, sadly, this may manifest as an older person that could be an open adversary. It could be the father, in some cases a grandfather, just an older uh, older people in general. And uh, also, too, at this time, uh, this could be about dealing, uh, having responsibilities to very serious and consistent type, um, and, and really uh, to or being responsible toward consistently dealing 
uh, with legal issues at this time. And you might be also involved, in, it, it could be a lot of a responsibility in some business competition that you may be dealing with uh, at this point in time as well. So anyway, hold on a moment, people. Sorry about that, I'm back. Anyway, well, um, Uranus will still be in Taurus, so the 11th house is what will be emphasized and highlighted. At this time, well, you might be dealing with um, some unusual, stubborn, obstinate behavior from friends, from acquaintance, uh, acquaintances, uh, even a stepchild in some cases, or stepchildren, if applicable. You might find yourself uh, really... Um, you might, this could be also manifest perhaps in Uranus uh, goals and aspirations that you do with a lot of persistence uh, because there's Taurus energy, of course, blended with this. It could be doing something with aerospace, astronomy, astrology, electronics, computers, innovation, even rocket science in some cases. You might find that your friendships might be more erratic and sporadic than usual in, in dealing with more unpredictable behavior. Uh, from them. Also, Taurus friendships. It could be Taurus sun, moon, or ascendant people, or simply ones that embody Taurus characteristics. Might figure more prominently in your future, or uh, perhaps in your in some groups or, or club or organization you may be involved in. Uh, it could also be about really um, perhaps obtaining or, or having uh, more persistent friendships in, in social media or so through social networking. It could also be uh, manifest perhaps in joining uh, some kind of Uranus uh, group club or organization. It could be something with astrology or astronomy, aerospace, uh, computers, electronics, esoteric subjects uh, in general. So anyway, the next thing up is Neptune will still be in Pisces, so the ninth house is what will be emphasized and highlighted. Now, at this time, well, uh, Neptune energy could be about dissipation and dissolving. This could be about the dissipation dissolving in some cases of perhaps uh, in-laws, grandchildren. Could also be, in some cases, sadly, about dealing with some uh, false prophets. Uh, be very careful at this time. Uh, cancer, because cancer is, is a lot like Pisces, I believe. I think it can be very impressionable, very gullible energy. And also, too, uh, at this time as well, um, positive note, uh, you might be taking some kind of Neptune uh, college course. It could be doing something with the metaphysical, which could include astrology, something with pharmaceutical work, learning special effects, uh, dancing, uh, something with um, uh, perhaps poetry or um, or photography, anything that could anesthesiology, anything that could be Neptune uh, related. Now, also too, when you're talking about Neptune energy, this could be more lethargic energy. I see it as more relaxing energy. You might find yourself uh, fantasizing more uh, as opposed to actually doing ninth house related matters such as higher education, publishing, religious activities, um, traveling abroad, expanding horizons. And this could, a lot of this, of course, could be dependent and predicated on aspects. This makes the points in your chart. If this makes, say, uh, an adverse aspect to your sun, Mars, or ascendant, or, or one or more of those uh, points. It could be um, where you might really have a greater propensity to be a little bit more lethargic and not really feel like doing these uh, ninth house related uh, matters and thinking more, more daydreaming, more fantasizing regarding them as opposed to doing. Now also be very careful regarding perhaps like false indoctrination in some and something connected with religion or, or matters with deception and duplicity in publishing, like if you're dealing with some uh, publisher, make sure it's reputable and it's somebody that's actually where they're, they're where you're being charged, you know, the fair amount or they're not trying to dupe you or, or what have you. So, I mean, those are, uh, or making false or fallacious promises to you in terms of how, what they think you can actually do in terms of your sales or what have you. So just in order to, in order for, uh, to, 
or in order to give you incentive to to uh, deal with them as an example now um and it might be a time where you might be doing some kind of neptune like publishing such as something connected with fantasy or fiction something with poetry uh dancing uh, photography about something about chemistry uh perhaps uh, the metaphysical, which of course include astrology, spirituality, and it might be a time too where you may uh, incorporate a lot of spirituality with religion if you hadn't done this uh, previously. Last but not least, Pluto will still be in Capricorn, so the seventh house is what will be emphasized and highlighted. Now, I know a lot of you don't want me to say the dreaded D word, but you know I'm going to anyway. In some cases, this may manifest in an actual literal uh, death uh, of a, a perhaps a significant other, a marriage partner. It could be a grandmother in some cases. Uh, this could actually this could also be an open adversary. Uh, this could be something too where you might feel like uh, about uh, getting more power in connection uh, with negotiation at this time. It could also manifest in power struggles. With seventh house people, it could be a legal opponent, some open enemy or adversary, even a grandmother in some cases, a significant other. You might be dealing, uh, this could also be in some cases where uh, you might find yourself in some kind of um, perhaps a Pluto uh, Plutonian uh, partnership, uh, such as something. Um, perhaps with uh, recycling or insurance, the occult supernatural astrology can be included, something with psychology or psychiatry, or doing something um, in a funeral home or, or something where as a coroner. So anything that anything uh, that could be Pluto related, that could be uh, that could be a partnership situation. Now also too, um, this could also be about the transformation. Uh, perhaps of relationships uh, at this time and also um, as well uh, you're talking about I mean this is a uh, Pluto uh, energy and it's also I mean your Pluto is it could be obsessive and compulsive so it's very important to, to guard against becoming overly obsessive or compulsive uh, in matters with your relationships at this time or, uh, or over legal matters or, or anything that could be seventh house uh, related or some kind of um, competition um, because they could drive, of course, being obsessive about things could, could drive you, I mean, figuratively crazy, so obviously. So those are some ways that this may uh, manifest uh, at this time. And uh, also, too, it could be a time, too, where in talking about open adversaries, it could be where terrorists or subversive types might be more inclined to be open enemies. I mean, terrorism, terrorists can be open enemies toward, uh, toward many people, regardless of what transit is going on. But this could even be more prominent, given that you're talking about Pluto and seventh house energy. So anyway... People, that will conclude this YouTube astrological segment for my Cancer April 2019 horoscope forecast part two of two. Stay tuned next time where I'll be giving you my Leo April 2019 horoscope forecast part one of two. Two things I want to get with you on before I head out. Firstly, the stars may impel, but do not compel. And secondly, never isolate any single astrological element, aspect, planetary placement, position, configuration, influence, or what have you, and make an analysis of a person, astrologically speaking, based on this alone, because astrologically speaking, the person is the sum of all their components in their natal chart, and not just one. Until next time, people, stay well.